Hi. Okay, so um, this is a true story. Every single word in the story is completely true. It is the story of how Kone and Twaki got booked for their first ever corporate function. Kone and Twaki is basically like these ridiculous white trash clowns with big fake moustaches that me and my good buddy Lo Fenta created back in the year 2000. Okay, the two of us met on the set of this like weird ass B-grade action movie where we got to do a lot of like really cool action shit like running on top of burning trains and climbing up sheer rock faces and Table Mountain and riding go carts through the streets of Cape Town and all of this being directed by this mad Dutch director whose most coherent piece of direction throughout the whole project was when he said, what the fuck was that, guys? <laughs> now, during this time, Lo is constantly speaking in this ridiculous accent of this character he'd created called Corne between takes. And I thought it was hilarious. I couldn't help uh, like imitating him. And eventually we decided, well, shit, we have to make this into a comedic duo. So he comes over to my house and we're sitting there. Conversation goes something like this. I'm like, okay, so if your character's called Corne, then my character must be called something like, and he's like, Dwaki. And I'm like, yes, exactly, Dwaki. And they do uh, this really terrible show, but they think it's like the most amazing show. And he's like, yes, and that's what it's called. It's called the most amazing show. And then we literally started writing and performing, but like a brand new hour long show every weekend for a year. It was just like this mad, crazy outpouring of the most surreal and irreverent content. The characters became like this wild, real life manifestation of our darkest subconscious desires and thoughts. And somewhere towards the end of that first giddy year of seeing exactly how far we could push the envelope of these crazy characters, we were hired to do an IT function an end of year function for an IT company at the Cape Town Yacht Club. And we were like, oh my God, we've arrived. We're finally gonna make like proper money out of this thing, out of this weird subversive idea. We've made it. So the day of the function arrives and so do we, albeit a bit late inside of like my Ford Bantam Bucky at the Cape Town Yacht Club. And we hurriedly started getting dressed as Kone and Twaki. But now getting dressed as Kone and Twaki entails like a mad frantic scramble. It's like a lot of like, polyester and tight pants and fake snores and it basically involves turning yourself into some sort of perverse white trash disco fugitive on tech. I am also brandishing a slightly bloodied cultural weapon like aptly titled the Murstick of Joy and Corne has like a three foot fake penis straining through his like white polyester suit pant. So imagine if you will instead of Superman appearing from a telephone booth what you rather get is Corne and Taki appearing from a Ford Bantam like some sort of retro Afrikaans Viagra nightmare. Okay, so there we are, me whirling Tucky's murtik joyfully and Corne readjusting his massive fake bill as we burst into the Cape Town Yacht Club and start working the room. Right, but now working the room with Kone and Twaki means the kind of sexually inappropriate behavior that would keep any self-respecting HR department busy for months. Basically, we like literally thrust our crotches into the faces of innocent bystanders. We're doing handstands in their laps, anything we can think of that could potentially get us arrested. So we split up and we do this for a while at no extra cost to the company. We always imagine how thrilling and deeply confusing and terrifying it must have been for unsuspecting members of the public to watch as these deranged lunatics start spreading the love. So anyway, there we are, working the room in our own inimitable way. And at one point, I noticed this woman in the corner that I recognize from somewhere. And so I, like, I, I sidle over to her and I'm like, hey lady, hey sexy, foxy dolphin lady. Stop it, stop it. Go for it, do it longer, do it more. How the flippin' hell are you? And she's like, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm flippin' amazing, Liddy. I mean, <laughs> look at me, <laughs> amazing, woohoo. So, sweet chicks, what are you doing here? She's like, oh, I, I knew him. What are you doing here? Like we the entertainment, Liddy. We are here to entertain you. So she looks slightly puzzled for a moment before saying, <clears throat> at a funeral. I'm sorry, what? Why are you entertaining people at a funeral? I turn my head. Okay, in slow motion toward a wild and panicked screaming that I only later realized was coming from inside my own head. And as I'm turning, I notice for the very first time the many wreaths 
and weeping people and get well soon cards scratched out okay and my eyes settle on a sight that is forever etched onto my broken mind and standing in the center of what was now very clearly a funeral was Corneille played by my dear friend Lo Fenter with a giant three-foot fake penis in his pants and sandwiched between his rather meaty hands is the bald head of a Catholic priest. I mean, this man was in a dress and had a burning handbag. That's how Catholic he was. And there is Corne with his holy man's bald head in his hands and he's playing it like a turntable. Wiki, 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 wiki. And occasionally licking it. So I walk over as nonchalantly as someone who is dressed as a sex offender can when he's just realized he's been plying his trade at a funeral by mistake. And I start tugging on Corne's sleeve. I'm like, guy, 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 stop it, stop it, guy, guy, listen, please, please. Please, can I speak to you for a moment, Kai? No, you can't, Twacky. I'm speaking to Father Christmas over here. Ma, I've been a naughty boy, Father. Wiki, 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 wiki. Say hello to Father Christmas, Twacky. <laughs> Forgive us, Father, for we are sending a mur of a lot right now. Kai, please, I need to speak to you in private for just a moment, please, Kai. Okay, fine, Twacky, shut. Okay, Father, I'll see you later. Wrap it up for me. I'll open it. <laughs> Stop it. What is it, Twacky? We're at the funeral, guy. What? We're at the funeral, guy. What? We're at a fucking funeral, dude. Oh. Turns out the IT function is upstairs. Oh. We scamper out of that sad and bewildered room and, like, run up the stairs with a sense of shame I have hitherto not experienced. Uh, and we rush into the IT function and make what in retrospect must have been the lamest excuse for being late ever. I'm sorry we were late, we were at the funeral by mistake. <laughs> and then we start performing for the IT function and that's when things really started to get depressing. It was a, a chilling and quite appropriate introduction to corporate functions if you ask me because these people seemed more depressed than the people at the funeral. I mean at the funeral there was only one dead dude. In this room it was everyone was dead. Eventually, and this is true, we said, you guys are cuck! We're going back to the funeral! And we did. And that party was wild. At one point I think we even resurrected the dead guy. And you know what I think I learned from that experience is the power of comedy. How it has no bounds. It transcends all experiences. I mean, you can literally do it anywhere. Except at a funeral. <laughs> don't, don't do it at a funeral. Oh. I'm Ruffin Fearing. Thank you very much. Oh.